Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Esther and this is Esther's Eden. I'm so excited for you guys to join me today. This is going to be part two and part three of how I plan my garden and hopefully that will be able to help you guys plan your gardens. Um, if you have not got a chance to watch our part one yet, I'll go ahead and leave, link that in the cards and let's go ahead and get started. Part two is seed catalogs. Now, one of my favorite things to do during the winter time, because we are buried in snow, which this year we we're buried in snow. Last year we weren't, and it was really long, a <laughs> really long winter. Um, is I like to thumb through seed catalogs over and over and over. Now, this is a great way to get your kids involved if you're in wanting to get them involved in gardening. Um, I give them each catalogs because I have tons of them, <laughs> and we pick out well, what do we want to grow this year. And when you get your kids involved in gardening, it really helps them to eat better. Um, it helps them to take pride in what you're growing and it gives them a sense of responsibility. And so my kids and I will snuggle up on the couch and we'll thumb through the catalogs and I, I try really hard to let them choose things and plan to let them plant them in the garden. Um, so I will show you a couple of my ones that I just have. I don't usually order from them. This is Johnny Seeds and then I also have Territorial. Um, I find their cost can be a little spendy, um, but I have them because sometimes, especially in the last couple years with the seed shortages and so many people buying seeds, it's been hard to find the ones that I want. So, so sometimes if you place orders with multiple companies, you can still end up getting what you want. These two companies, they have a lot of flowers for cut flower gardening and I do a lot of that so so that helps um this strictly medicinal seeds company um they don't have a very flashy catalog at all but if you're looking for very unusual herbs um like medicinal herbs these guys probably have it um I at being an herbalist I plant a lot of medicinal herbs in my garden and if it has permaculture benefits or wildlife benefits or pollinator benefits, it's probably going to be something I'm going to want. Um, my absolute top favorite company that I've been ordering from, excuse me, um, probably since my second year gardening, because I think the first year we just went to the grocery store and bought what I could, but is Baker Creek. Um, not only this, I mean, this one is a couple years old now but this is their whole seed catalog and it literally has everything that they have it is absolutely stunning and I already told you I'm a total sucker for beautiful garden pictures oh my gosh so looking through this catalog they have recipes they have fun little history facts they have um information on some of their like all their crew but truly amazing to just even just to look at this catalog so it's worth it um this one is for free if you sign up on their website um but what I really love so when I first started buying from them I think their prices were like a dollar fifty for most packages and now they're up to about four dollars uh but given everything that's gone on I that's still crazy and when they send you packets of seeds, you don't just get like a couple, you get a lot of seeds per packet. And I can't remember, but I think they do free shipping now. Um, it's never been expensive, but I'm pretty sure now it's just free for no matter what size of order you do. Um, so that's uh, always a bonus to me. Um, like, look at these, just, it's just so beautiful. So I will get out my catalogs, my seed catalogs, and just go through them. I will look and see what's beautiful, what catches my eye. Is there something that I've been wanting to try and wanting to grow? I try to grow um, a couple new things every year just for fun. But most of the time, what I will do is actually sort of part, part two and three go together. And the way that they go together is that I will get my seed boxes out and I will just thumb through them. Um, hold on. I will go get them. Let's. So I will get my 
seed boxes out. This is very different than doing this at my normal table. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I'll get my catalogs and then I'll grab my boxes of seeds and then I will also get my garden notebook. And I have actually already done this for this year because we were not really planning on doing a ton of gardening this year. We were actually going to shrink the garden so that we could have sort of a year of easier homesteading. We've been building and building and building for the last six years. Um, and it's just tiring. Homesteading is a lot of work and it's just tiring. We've had a lot of um, things going on in our family um, and we just needed to take a break. Well, because this last year we had this huge drought and the season was so hot. I actually lost a lot of my garden plants right off the get-go. And and if you don't get them planted in our area soon enough, then it's just not even worth it. So, so I actually ended up having a garden break this year more than I was expecting. And because of that, I've, I've totally changed my plan. So I, I had already made a seed order, a very small seed order in December, um, partly because I don't like to be without enough seeds to get us through and you know if something happened where I couldn't get them and then also I don't like to um wait too long because sometimes the seeds the the varieties that I want to get that are sold out and last year that was a huge problem um usually so before 2020 and all the craziness that's happened there you could wait until even March to get your seeds here um, and they wouldn't be sold out. And now, because so many people are gardening, which is so great, I'm super excited that that many more people are gardening, um, you can't you can't wait. If you don't get your seed order in by, you know, right after Christmas, then you're already seeing um, shortages. So I would imagine a seed shortage would, that was last year will probably continue for a few years just because of the way that seed saving works. So... Um, anyway, I would encourage you to, to do this sooner than later. If you're in my area, even though we're buried in snow and it's cold, think about what you want to plant in the spring and get those seed orders going. So here's how I do it. I will open my box, um, kind of pull out what I have and just take inventory. I will see, you know, um, it, it just reminds me Baker Creek has all of these beautiful seed packets and, um, and I will just kind of go through and see which ones are my staples. Like we grow, um, these blue lake bush beans, which grow super good in our area. So I buy a bunch of them. And so I just had in December restocked all of that, my, my staple, um, seeds. And of course, you know, carrots and things like that. Root crops do really well here. And, and then, so I'll just go through here and take note of anything that I don't have very many seeds left. And then I will take a, just a regular piece of paper and I will write them down. And um, I try, since I order most things through Baker Creek, I try to just flip through the catalog at the same time and say like, you know, you start with, you start with letter A. And so my seeds are actually organized in alphabetical order um, just to make seed shopping easier and when I'm planting, especially with this many seeds, then um, it helps me to be able to, to keep track and find them quicker. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just go through here alphabetically, look through, and then go to that space. Um, now, I do have two boxes of seeds here, and the reason I have two boxes is because this top box is all of my um, vegetable seeds, basically, and then this bottom box is all of my herbs and flowers. So I have those on this side and then here on this side are all the seeds that I have saved myself. I try really hard not to put them and mix them in with seeds that I've purchased just because if I make the mistake and something cross pollinates and it doesn't end up growing true to seed, I wanna be able to have true seed to choose from that's not been contaminated. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the way that I do that. And I, I do top up all of my stuff. Um, so that is part two and part three of my garden process. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining me for part two and part three of my garden planning process. 
If you have been enjoying these videos so far, then please subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you will be sure to catch the next part four and part five of how I plan my garden. I hope that this information is going to help you guys to plan your most amazing garden. I love gardening and I'm so excited to share my passion with you guys. I not had the opportunity yet to see part one. I encourage you to go back. I'll put the card up here and so that you can watch it before part four and part five come out. We'll see you guys again real soon. Thanks so much. We'll see you later.